The Beautiful Trousers by Valentin Katayev. There were two of them, a prose writer and a poet. Their names are unimportant, but they ate. And in the next room in this huge run-down hotel, which resembled a chest of drawers forced open and thrown into utter disarray by a burglar, a hotel full of dust, heat, the clanking of cavalry spurs, and the tramping of infantry boots. Master of Arts, Zerlich, sat naked on a striped mattress and read Apuleius in the original. He had graduated from the university with a degree from the Department of Romance Studies. He could read, write, and speak many languages. He worked in the diplomatic service, and he was very hungry. His coarse cotton shirt with laces instead of buttons and his trousers made of sacking and still bearing the stamp of the automobile transport depot where the sacks had done their service to begin with were hanging on a nail. The philologist Zerlich owned nothing besides these trousers and this shirt, and he guarded and preserved them as carefully as a young lady preserves her ball gown. His neighbors ate. He visualized perfectly how they ate and what they ate, imagination which is not ordinarily a quality associated with philologists. This time drew for him unforgettable Flemish still lifes. not less than four pounds of excellent black bread and coarse salt. Very possibly a samovar. At any rate, the sound of a falling cup was indescribable. Zerlik leaned his crooked, gourd-shaped head on both hands and listened. They were chewing. Zerlik swallowed his saliva. It was unbearable. Then he swept the bare room with his dusty eyes, a hopeless formality. Emptiness is emptiness. There was nothing edible about. He hurriedly licked his lips and stole on tiptoe to the keyhole. They sat at the desk, ladling up with their spoons a salad of tomatoes, cucumbers, and onions. The salad bowl was very large. Next to the bowl lay a damp, brick-like loaf of bread. Over the samovar, hung a cloud of steam and a thin buzzing sound as of a swarm of mosquitoes. The sun glared through the cotton shade, burning out on it the cross of the window frame. Gorging themselves, the Master of Arts thought sorrowfully. He hesitated a moment, then he quickly slipped into his trousers. He knew what he had to do. He had to knock politely on the door and ask, May I come in? And then, Tell me, my friends, do you happen to have a pen? Mine broke. To knock politely. He had knocked politely yesterday, the day before yesterday, last Wednesday, last Friday, and Saturday. No, it was impossible. Zerlik sadly removed his trousers and hung them up on the nail. Even hunger should know its limits, but hunger knew no limits. They were eating. The philologist clutched his head and quickly put on his trousers. He knocked politely. Come in. The master of arts cleared his throat, arranged his face into a worldly smile, and entered. They were sitting at the desk, but on the desk, piled with huge sheets of newspapers, there was nothing edible. Even the samovar was gone. Swine, thought the philologist. They've managed to hide everything away, bare as a field. Could they have put the samovar into the washstand? He chewed a little with his lips and tied the laces at his throat into a pretty bow. Good afternoon, my friends. Good afternoon, professor. Listen, my friends, Zerlik puffed out his cheeks and blew up at his own nose. The point, my good comrades, is, you see, dear fellow writers, hmm. He looked once again at the table and suddenly noticed the edge of the bread showing from under the papers. And Zerlik could no longer take his eyes from it, just as a bird cannot take its eyes away from the emerald eyes of a boa constrictor. What is it, Zerlik? The corner of the black loaf showed with absolute distinctness against the telegrams of the Russian news agency. 
I am very hungry, Serlik said quietly. He caught himself. He shook his head and cried gaily. You know, I am very fond of bread and I am very fond of tomatoes and cucumbers. I want some tea. The prose writer turned pale. How careless of them. Here, I can offer you a little piece of bread. I've just received my ration at the artillery courses. As for tomatoes, well, you know. No, no, he could not have noticed the salad. The salad was camouflaged too well. The poet smiled with melancholy. Yes, sir, look, have a piece of bread, but tomatoes, so help me, we have none. We haven't eaten anything ourselves for three days. I mean two. Zerlik hastily broke off a piece of bread and stuffed it into his mouth. Sit down, Zerlik. Zerlik sat down. His eyes were expressionless. His cheeks bulged as he chewed. How are you, Zerlik? Zerlik sat down. His eyes were... Oh, sorry. 